Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. This time we're going back to 1956 and the book is called The Stars, My Destination and it was written by Alfred Bester. In England, the title of the book was Tiger Tiger. It was originally serialized in Galaxy Magazine in 1956. Before we go any further, if you like this content, subscribe and hit the notification bell and drop a comment. And now, let's get into the universe of the stars, my destination. When our story begins, there are 11 inhabited worlds in the solar system, three planets and eight moons. The inner inhabited worlds are Venus, Earth, the Moon, and Mars. And the seven outer moons were Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto around Jupiter, Rhea and Titan around Saturn, and Triton around Neptune. There was a combined population of 11 billion people in the solar system. In the early days of the 24th century, on Callisto, a researcher named Jante figured out that when he is in extreme danger, he can teleport himself to safety. The researchers around him immediately put him into danger so they could figure out how he did it. They then called for suicidal volunteers for them to test. 80% of the volunteers were killed, but 20% succeeded in teleporting themselves to safety. Once they figured out how to do it, they began teaching it. And by the 25th century, most people could jaunt, as they called it. By then, most people could do it if they had confidence. The maximum seems to be a thousand miles, and the weakest ones could do five miles. The reality of everybody knowing how to jaunt caused economic chaos and that led to a war between the outer satellites and the inner worlds. His name is Gulliver Foyle, better known as Gully. He's 30 years old and he spent the last 170 days on the wreck of the spaceship Nomad. He's a mechanics mate third class. The Nomad was halfway between Mars and Jupiter when a missile hit it, killing everybody except Gully. Gully, being the only survivor, is now stuck in a locker that is four feet wide, four feet deep, and nine feet high. He's only able to leave his locker for five minutes at a time as he goes out through the wreck gathering supplies. On one such trip, he sees a spaceship close by, so he rushes to the bridge and launches the distress button and the flares. The other ship sees his flares, cut its jets, and began getting close to the Nomad. It got close enough so that Gully could read the name, the Varga T 1339. But then the Varga T turned back on his jets and accelerated away without rescuing him. That enraged him, and he vowed that he would survive and get revenge on the Varga T for not rescuing him. He began studying the manuals on board the ship in hopes of getting the one good engine started, which he was able to do finally. When the engines finally started, the debris fell on him, knocking him out. When he came through, he was in the Sargasso asteroid. The Sargasso asteroid was a small asteroid that was located in the asteroid belt. A team of scientists got marooned there 200 years ago and over the next two centuries they and their descendants augmented the living area by adding the wrecks of ships. The descendants of these first scientists call themselves the scientific people and they are the ones that saved Gully when his ship the Nomad came within a mile of their asteroid. While Gully was going in and out of consciousness the scientific people married him off, gave him a new name and put him in a 23rd century rocket ship that was attached to the asteroid as he and his wife's new home. When he finally came through, he examined the rocket ship he was in and he realized that he could jury rig it from what he learned on the Nomad. He kicked his wife out and told her to warn the residents and he jury rigged it and blasted out of the asteroid, not knowing or caring if anyone lived or died. He was picked up by the inner planet's navy 90,000 miles inside the orbit of Mars. The crew of the ship that saved him patched him up. And when he came through this time, 
They asked him who did it to him. He didn't know what they were talking about. So they showed him his face in a mirror and his face was all tattooed with the words nomad printed across his forehead. Apparently, the scientific people did that to him and was their custom. Robin Wensbury is a Jante teacher in New York City. She retrains adults with head trauma in the art of jaunting, teleporting, regaining that ability. And Gully Foyle is supposed to be in her class, but she noticed he's not with the group. When he does appear, he's all wet. And she knows that since there's no rain east of St. Louis, he must have been further than that, which is something in his state he should not be able to do when she indicates that she's going to tell the hospital that he's faking he tells her that he knows something about her and her family and that he will talk to her at her apartment in green bay wisconsin besides being able to jaunt robin was a one-way telepath she could transmit but not receive when they get to her apartment he admits that he can jaunt and that he's been searching for the ship the Virga T1339. He also tells her that he knows that she has family on Callisto, a mother and two sisters, and that when the war broke out, all citizens of the outer satellites were told to leave the inner planets and were given one month to do so. Those that didn't would be arrested as spies. So he threatens her and tells her if she tells anyone, he will tell the authorities about her. Back in New York, Pristine of Pristine is making some moves. Pristine is the company that made and owns the spaceship Nomad and Vorga. And Pristine is the head of the family that owns that company and the rule of the company. First, he engages with Dagaham couriers to get the prior, which he says they must get at all costs through a man called Gulliver Foyle. Next, he engages the Regis Sheffield Law Office. He wants them to defend against him and his company, against the government for the kidnapping of a man and holding him. And that man is Gulliver Foyle. Next, he travels across the country to the Vancouver shipyards for the launch of his new Volga class ships. When he got there, someone tried to blow it up. They failed. The person who tried to blow it up was Gilbert Foyle and he was captured when Prestine gets back to new york to his mansion he met with an operative from central intelligence and with his lawyer mr sheffield and mr dagenham and it turns out that on the ship the nomad there was two very important things one was a shipment of platinum and two was a secret weapon called pyre that in the right hands could win the war for whoever gets it first. Dagenham had Gully and he had him in a hospital in Mexico where they tortured him so they could try to break him and get the information as to where the nomad was located. But Gully was so filled with hate and a need for revenge that they couldn't break him. So they transferred him to a jante proof prison in Europe. The prison was located under the mountains in some old mine shafts. It was kept pitch black so that the prisoners would not be able to know where they were so they could teleport out. While in the prison, Gully realized that he could speak to a fellow prisoner, Gisbella McQueen. He was able to speak to her because of a crack in a mountain that linked their two cells and and through some acoustic freak allowed communications when they stood in a certain spot. Together they planned their escape, but Gully was able to make his move when Dagenham came to interrogate him. He was able to knock him out and use that opportunity to get a hold of Gisbella and escape the prison. Gis was able to help him find an underground doctor that removed the tattoos from his face. When the cops finally caught up with them, they were able to get a hold of a ship and take off from Earth. But what they don't know is that Prestein and Dagenham is tracking them. Gully and Jiz headed for the Sargasso asteroid where he left the Nomad. When he got there, because of the way he left, he realized that they had created a crater 
in the asteroid and that the residents had to go deep into the interior to survive. Galianjes quickly located the nomad and then he forced his way into the interior of the asteroid so he could get the tools he needed to get the safe out of the nomad. When he got back, Jiz noticed something about Gully. It turns out that when they removed the tattoos from his face, they left scar tissue under the skin. And whenever he gets emotional, blood pumps into the scars and it makes the tattoo glow in his face, which would make him easily recognizable. So now he has to learn to control his emotions. It's a Duggenham ship coming up. So they realized they didn't have a lot of time. So the plan was while Gully brought the ship around, Jiz would stay behind and blow the safe out into space. And Gully would maneuver the ship so that the safe came right into the ship. And Jiz would follow right after. But it didn't quite work that way. The safe got locked in the hatch and Jiz got locked out of the ship and then Gully left her behind. So she was caught by Degenham while Gully escaped. A year later, while the war between the outer satellites and the inner planets heated up and drafts was instituted on both sides, a man named Jeffrey Fourmile appeared in Green Bay, Wisconsin. He was the owner of the Four Mile Circus, and he was young, rich, and a buffoon, and he was also Gully in disguise. In the past year, Gully had gone to Mars, where he bribed the chief sergeant of the Mars Commander Brigade to turn him into a fighting machine, a cyborg. And the only reason he was in Green Bay was to find Robin Wensberry. But Robin was no longer in her apartment. Her building had burned down and she was in the hospital. So using his circus as a distraction, he went and kidnapped her. When Robin came through, Gully told her why he needed her. He used his money to try and dig information up about the Volga. And what he got was the names of three men that worked on the Volga and a locket with a picture of Robin, her mother, and her sisters in it. He figured that the Volga was being used to smuggle refugees from the outer satellites to the inner planets. And that was how they got the locket of Robin's mother. He feels he will not be able to pass into high society, but Robin will be able to. And together, they could find out what happened to the Virga and to Robin's family. And while she hates him for what he did to her, she will work with him. On New Year's Eve, Gully and Robin jaunted down to Canberra, Australia. While at a society party, she taught him how to mingle with the rich without giving himself away. They then went and kidnapped the man, Forrest, that they came to look for. Once they got a hold of him, they took him to the beach where Gully began trying to get information from him. But just as he was about to reveal the information he had, he died. Just at that moment, a figure of a burning man appeared to them. When they looked closely, they realized the man was Gully, and then he disappeared. Robin thinks it was a picture of Gully burning in hell, but Gully doesn't care. He says if he goes to hell, he's going to take the Volga with him. They then jumped to Shanghai. There, after stopping off at a ball, they went to look for the man that they came to see, Sergei. They got to Sergei, and just as he was about to tell, he dies. That's when Gully figured out that each of these men who were programmed to drop dead the minute they begin to reveal anything about the Volga. And just as before, a burning Gully appeared before them and then disappeared. The next man on the list was Poggi in Rome, and that's where they went. So they jumped to Rome, to the Galleria of the Stairs. There they began asking around for Angelo Porgi. What they didn't know was Yao of Central Intelligence was there ahead of them, waiting for them. But just as they were apprehended, the burning man appeared, surprising everyone and giving Gully 
and Robin time to escape. Next, they went to the Prestine Ball held in Central Park at the Prestine Mansion. There he meets Prestine and Prestine introduces him to his daughter, Lady Olivia, and also to Saul Dagenham. He thinks that Dagenham does not recognize him, but Dagenham does recognize him because the name he's using was planted in his subconscious when Dagenham had him and was torturing him. When he meets Olivia, he falls for her, but she's cold to him. He then meets Jizz, who he thought was dead, but it seems that Dagenham saved her, and she and Dagenham is now an item. Although she did not tell Dagenham that Four Mile is gully. It was while they were at the party that the outer satellites bombed Earth, while Earth defenses were able to destroy most of them in orbit some of them did get through the first thing he did when the bombs fell was to try to save olivia but she didn't want to be saved she wanted to watch the destruction going on around her next gully went to saint patrick cathedral on fifth avenue he bought the old cathedral and made it his headquarters when he got there everyone was gone because of the bombings except for robin who was hysterical Robin told him that if he gave her her freedom, she would give him some information that she gathered. Since he was out of clues, he agreed. The name she gave him was Kemsey, and the address was on the moon. She got it from the death of Sergei when he died. But once Gali got the information, he reneged on his promise to free her. He told her he needed her to help him with Olivia, but she jumped before he could stop her. Captain Peter Yeovil was at Central Intelligence Headquarters in London and he was reading the reports on the results of the attack on Earth. The attacks hit North and South America and killed an estimated 12 million people. That's the man that Robin went to see. When she got there, she told him all about Gully. Meanwhile, Olivia meets with her father, Prestine, and she tells what she saw when she looked at Four Mile. Now, Olivia is blind to the way humans see, but she can see in the infrared, in the magnetic spectrum, as she can see radiation. So she begins drawing what she saw when she looked at Four Mile for her father. Now, Saul Dagenham is with Gisbella. Now, their bedroom is separated into two by a large lead-lined glass. You see, years ago, Dagenham was radiated, and it didn't kill him, but it made him dangerously radioactive, and he can spend no more than five minutes in the presence of someone before it kills them. So, Dagenham and Jiz are living together, but they must spend most of the time separated by the glass to keep her safe. He tells Jiz that he knows that Jeffrey Four Mile is gully and that he needs to get to him and stop him. He will do it to help win the war. Manubium on the moon is a company called Bacteria Inc. that hired people that were incapable of jaunting and paid them slave wages. That's where Kempsey was and that's where Gully went to find him. Gully got a hold of Kempsey and brought him back to his ship where he performed an operation that would allow him to bypass the block that kills them when he asked them about information concerning the Volga. Kempsey finally told Gully what he wanted to know. Apparently, the reason the Volga did not pick up Gully was because they were running refugees from the outer colonies to the inner planets. And once they got them into space, what they would do is steal all their valuables and their clothes and then push all the refugees out the airlock to die. So they killed 600 refugees that way. And the captain of the Volga who gave the order was Lindsay Joyce, who now lives on Mars. And that's where Gully is headed. Meanwhile, Prestine, Duggerham, and Central Intelligence all issued notices to the entire inner planet for information leading to the capture of Jeffrey Formile, aka Gulliver Foyle. When Gully got to Mars, the first thing he did was to kidnap their full telepath, Sigurd Maxman, who was a 70 year old man in a child's body. The reason Gully kidnapped the telepath 
were because it would be the only way he could speak to Lindsay. Lindsay had joined the Scobsy colony on Mars, and what the Scobsies do is they server their sensory nervous system and they live out their days without sight, sound, speech, smell taste or touch so the only way he can get through to them is via a telepath so he took Sigurd and went to find Lindsay and when he did find Lindsay with the help of Sigurd and the burning man who appeared to him he found out that the person that gave the order to leave him behind was Olivia Prestain. Gully rushed to his ship with the Mars commandos hard on his heels and they were cyborgs just like him. And just as he was about to be captured, the outer satellites attacked Mars with nuclear weapons, just as they did Earth. That distracted the commandos long enough for him to throw Sigurd at them and jump into his ship and blast off at full acceleration, which knocked him out. When he came through this time, he was on the Volga with Olivia Prestain. She got to him just before the commandos did. She admits that she was the one that left him behind and she was the one that killed the 600 people. She says she hates the world for her being blind and she wishes to bring everybody down to her level. And she's finally found someone who she thinks is as ruthless and as angry as she is, Gully. But after speaking to her, it seems as if the rage and anger that Gully had has burnt out of him. Meanwhile on Earth, Prestein, Dagenham and Yeovil are all meeting to discuss the war and to discuss Gully. They find out from Prestein that Pryor is a pyrophotic alloy that, that they believe can produce the equivalent of the explosion that started the universe. And they say that the outer satellites are trying to get to Gully also. So they set a trap that they hope will bring Gully running to Earth. So Gully got to Earth and decided to give himself up. But he picked the wrong person, Regis Sheffield. What he doesn't know is that Regis Sheffield is a outer satellite's secret agent. So before Gully could react, Sheffield had drugged him and jaunted away with him. Sheffield takes Gully to St. Patrick's Cathedral, which used to be Gully's headquarters. Once they were at St. Patrick's Cathedral, Sheffield told Gully why the outer satellites wanted him. Apparently, when the outer satellites ship attacked the nomad, they took the one survivor off, which was Gully, and they took him 600,000 miles away, and they put him in a space suit and stuck him out into space, and they went and hid and watched him. They were going to use him as a decoy, but he disappeared, and when they checked, he had gotten back to the nomad, the first human being to ever teleport more than a thousand miles. He teleported 600,000 miles on that day. So they want him so they could rip him apart, so they could figure out how he did it. Meanwhile, Sheffield's assistant, who saw him take Gully, followed them and found out where they were and then went to Central Intelligence and told Central Intelligence everything he knows. Meanwhile, Central Intelligence, who had a plan of their own to ignite the prior so that Gully would come running, since it takes a telepath to ignite the prior, they were using Robin to do it. And when they found out, they tried to stop her, but it was too late. Everywhere around the planet that there was even a microscopic dust of prior it exploded when Robin's thoughts touched it. Places where people were testing, where it got washed down into the drain, where it got blown into the air, all exploded. But the largest explosion was at St. Patrick's Cathedral. Gully had a tent of a gram that he was experimenting with that he left out and it exploded, bringing down the cathedral and opening up a giant crater beneath it that was blazing. Sheffield was killed in the explosion and Gully was at the bottom of the crater. The fire in the crater ignited Gully's clothes and Duggenham and Yorvil could not get to him. Gully was not dead, but he was suffering from synesthesia. To get away from the pain and in an unconscious moment, Gully's space jaunted. He jaunted back into the past, becoming the burning man that he saw in Australia, in Shanghai, in Rome, on the moon and on Mars. He jaunted back to the nomad and saw himself in the wreck of the nomad. 
He jumped back to the prison where he unwittingly helped himself and just escaped. He jumped into the future where Robin Wensbury is married to Yeovil. Golly had jumped 30 years into the future where Robin told him how to get out of the fire and save himself. After doing what Robin told him to do, he then jumped over to the star chamber where Prestane, Duggingham and Yeovil was waiting. He asked each of them there what they wanted. Prestine wanted his property prior. Dagenham and Yeovil wanted him to give them the prior so that they could defeat the outer satellite. Just wanted him to destroy it so that no one could get it. And Robin wanted him to forgive himself for all the things he had done. But in the end, he listened to a robot that said he should teach those who wanted to learn. So he invited them all to follow him to the ruins of St. Patrick's Cathedral. He grabbed the rest of the prior from its innate safe and began jumping around the world, throwing it out to the crowds wherever he went. Then he went to London and let them catch him and gave the rest to Dagenham and Yeovil. He then jumped in front of the crowd and he told them basically that they can blow themselves up or they can come and find him and he will teach them how to jump to the stars. He then began jumping to different stars in the galaxy and the first one he visited was Rigel. He then jumped again, this time to the star Vega. Next, he jumped to the star Canopus. The next star he visited was Aldebaran. The next star he visited was Antares. After that, he jumped back to the Sargasso asteroid, back to the Nomad. He recited a poem that he was taught, this time a little changed. Gullifoil is my name and Terra is my nation. Deep space is my dwelling place, the stars my destination. He went into the locker that saved his life so many years ago and went to sleep. The girl they had married him to found him and went and told the leader Joseph. And when they came and looked at him, Joseph came and looked at him and said, he is dreaming. I, a priest, know these dreams. Presently, he will awaken and read to us his people, his thoughts. Joseph then sat down to wait for him to awaken. Moira went and got some food and some water. And she set the food down as an offering before him and she bathed him with the water and then she settled down to wait. And that's how the book ends. When the book begins, the protagonist is not someone you will like. He's not a hero. He is vengeful, angry, mean, doesn't care who gets in his way and he will hurt them. He's also a rapist and willing to leave people to die. In fact, there are very few totally good people in this book. Most of them have an agenda and they're willing to do things for their ideology. The only one you can say is totally innocent is Robin Wensbury and she gets screwed over in this book. But in the end, Gully redeemed himself and he obviously gave the human species the ability to travel throughout the galaxy because when he jumped into the future by 30 years robin hinted that he was the one that thought all of them to travel to the stars by jumping or teleporting so if you like this video leave a thumbs up and i will see you in the next video and i want to thank you for watching and listening